Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you. Thank you for joining today's workshop, Apex Plus Server Sign JavaScript. My name is Chaitanya. I'm a product manager on the Oracle Apex team. And for today's workshop, I do have my colleagues joining me, Srihari, Rodney, Anusha, Nalini, to help you guys out with the Q&D in the Q&D channel. So if you have any questions, if you're stuck with any of these steps, or if you're not able to proceed further in the hands-on lab during these two hours workshop, please feel free to post your questions in the Q&A tab. I'm Chaitanya, product manager for Oracle Apex. I'm responsible for Apex product management. And on the screen, you see my Twitter and LinkedIn handles. So if you have any questions related to Apex, if you're just getting started with Apex, if you'd like to explore more in Apex, or if you would like to share some success stories of Apex, and if you have anything to talk about Apex, feel free to reach out to me in Twitter or in LinkedIn. Building enterprise applications 20 times faster with 100 times less code. I'm sure some of you have great knowledge about Apex, or some of you are having some working knowledge of Apex. Well, some of you today might be just getting started to know about Apex, or some of you would like to explore more about Apex. Let's have a quick understanding of what Apex is all about. Apex, or Oracle Apex, is the world's most popular low-code application development platform for enterprise applications. Using Apex, you can build scalable, secure enterprise applications with world-class features that can be deployed anywhere. And with Apex, you can quickly develop and deploy compelling applications that can solve real business problems and provide immediate value. To use Apex, you don't need to be um, an expert in a vast array of technologies and deliver sophisticated solutions. You just need to focus on solving the business problem and Apex takes care of the rest. And then let's have a quick understanding of what Apex application development is or Apex service is all about. And this is what we are going to use in our workshop today. Apex is a fully supported, no cost feature of Oracle database. Like if you have a database, you already have Apex. And Apex runs everywhere your Oracle database runs, whether it is um, on-prem or whether it is on cloud, whether it is on Oracle cloud or anywhere else. And in today's workshop, we will be using Apex on Oracle cloud. Yes, Apex service or Apex application development is actually Apex on Oracle cloud. Well, the world's most popular liquid enterprise platform, Apex, comes as an all-inclusive service with the world's best Converged database, Oracle Autonomous database, and on Exadata Cloud infrastructure. Now, what do you get with Apex service? We get Apex as a low code platform. You get Autonomous database where you can build applications on a variety of data types that can be like relational, JSON, spatial, text, or can be blockchain, and it can handle any workload, it can be transactions, streaming, IoT, and machine learning, and more and your applications will be running on Exadata hardware. So in today's workshop, we will be using Apex service. We'll be creating an Apex instance and we'll be building application on top of that. For those of you who just joined, I welcome you again to this today's workshop. It's gonna be a two hour workshop. In this hands-on lab, we're gonna create a free account and we're gonna create an Apex service and then proceed further. All right, so let's take a look at what's the workshop is all about today. And by the way, I just forgot to tell you, with Apex service actually, you can spin up your service in just a few minutes. And that's what you're gonna have a first time experience today in today's workshop. They don't need to worry about the complexity of mid tires, word balancers, and encryption and many more. So let's get that experience today. And as part of today's workshop, uh, as you see in the slide, 
These are the seven tasks that we are going to do. And there are two useful links that you will need throughout this workshop. One is the sign up link for the Oracle Cloud free trial account. And the second one is the hands-on lab guide. My colleagues will be pasting these two links in the Q&A or the chat window for you. If not, you might want to just have a look at that, copy this, and then, and then I'll be showing the QR code as well. So just try to get into these two URLs. So we will be needing these two running hand in hand. So what exactly are we going to do uh, in today's workshop? The first thing that is we're going to do is uh, sign up for an Oracle Cloud free trial account. We'll see how we can do that. So those of you who are already on Oracle Cloud free trial, it's completely fine. You can use uh, that for today's workshop. The only constraint being, um, because this is going to be using database 21C, your home region should be one of the three listed regions that I'm going to show in a few minutes. So um, let me just brief you about the workshop today. For, data, uh, for developers who um, know or who are familiar with SQL, build SQL, there is no other framework as, compel as compelling or as empowering as Apexes. But we know that all developers uh, don't know how to program using build SQL. In Oracle Database 21C, developers can now write server-side JavaScript. So what this means is JavaScript professionals can now be part of our Apex application development code base. And not just that, we can leverage a massive set of JavaScript libraries for tasks that are hard to solve in PL SQL. So in today's workshop, what are we gonna do? We're gonna learn how to utilize this new feature in database 21C and start writing server-side JavaScript in different areas of Apex. We'll start with SQL commands. We will write some JavaScript code there and execute that. Then we will also do process, pro, processes and validations. And finally, what we're gonna do is extend uh, some modules and finally use external modules to empower your Apex application and take it further. So this is in short what we're gonna do a summary of the workshop is. And as you read, as you start working on this, we'll understand more. So. This is actually split into different steps. The first step is signing up for an Oracle free trial account. Second one is we're going to create a work Apex service. And third one is Apex workspace. For you to work or on Apex or to build applications in Apex, you will be needing a private area. And that's what a workspace is all about. So you will be creating a workspace. And then the next step, you're gonna create an Apex application from a spreadsheet. And then you prepare a report and test some pseudo code. And you will be extending your application using JavaScript in a later stage. But finally, we'll use external modules and expand the application. As I mentioned just now, we need uh, two useful links uh, for today's workshop. The first one is the sign up one, and the second one is the workshop lab. Um, please do reach out in QD channel if you don't have these links, or my colleagues can ping you the links. Okay, first step, signing up for Oracle Cloud free trial account. On my screen, you see the QR code and you also have the bit.ly link for the sign up. It's actually cloud.oracle.com slash free. So you'll be going there and you will be signing up for the free trial. What do you get with Oracle Cloud free trial sign up? You get always free services that you can use for unlimited time, plus 30 day free trial of free credits that you can use for your additional OCI services. And you remember, as we just discussed, this is gonna be using Oracle Database 21C. And so not all of the regions have Database 21C at the moment. So you should be careful in choosing the home region as Germany Central Frankfurt, UK South London, or US West, Phoenix. You can also try out with Ashburn, but I would recommend for today's session, please do focus only on these three home regions. Like if you are, you, your email ID has already been whitelisted. So the email ID that you have used to register for this workshop has been whitelisted already. And so it should be pretty easy for you to sign up. You don't need to go through the credit card process and all. So you will be simply navigated through a wizard for a quick sign-up process. And I'm gonna just share you how you do that. 
all right but please do remember when you're signing up for a cloud account please make sure your home region is germany central uk south and us west i repeat these are the three regions that you should be choosing from because if you choose any other region than these, then there is not going to be a database 21C. And, and so our workshop will not work because this is dependent on database 21C MLE feature, which is available only in a few regions. So please do focus on that and please do sign up only in these three home regions for today. You might have a question on what's going to happen if you sign up for a free trial account today is that going to be there forever? Yes, absolutely. You will be able to use your free trial. You will be able to use your Oracle Cloud account forever. And some of the services are always free, as you see, as services you can use for unlimited time. As such, the application that you want to build today, or maybe you can explore more going forward, even after the workshop today. So first step, please sign up as a prerequisite, and then we'll proceed further. You might need just three to five minutes of signing up. If you have any issues of signing up, please do let my colleagues know in the Q&A channel. They'll be able to help you out and hook you up, maybe, you know, and get an account for you in minutes. So let's proceed first with signing up. Okay, I already do have my free trial account, so I'm not going to demo that today. I would leave it to you as a first prerequisite. Like I mentioned, the email ID that you use to register for this event is already been whitelisted. And so you'll be able to avoid the credit card process and go ahead straight away to this particular page, I mean, to this uh, free trial account. So if you go to that sign up link, and uh, if you notice the Q&A channel, um, my colleagues can help you with the signing up process. If you have any issues, I just go back one step to let you know for those of you just joined. So this is the free trial sign up link i just noticed someone not able to go through that so you can just scan this qr code and then get to this particular page it's bitly slash apex hyphen sign up and make sure you choose only those three home regions okay the sign up will take three to five minutes let's go through that okay the first step when you go to cloud.oracle.com slash free You'll be entering your account information, like country, your first name, last name, and also provide your email ID. On the screen, I just removed it. So you need to enter, input your email ID and also go to the CAPTCHA and click verify my email. And once you do that, because you have signed up for this workshop, Oracle is giving you some special offers. And uh, on my screen, you see Oracle Cloud Trial with Singapore $500 grades for 30 days might be different for you in your case, depending upon um, your region. So you need to select that offer. And then in the next step, and this is very important, after you input your password, make sure you input your cloud account name. On the screen, you see I have already input my cloud account. And the most important thing is signing up for the home region. As I mentioned already, this is using database 21C feature MLE. And so it's not available across all of the regions. I encourage you to sign up only in Germany Central or UK South or US West Phoenix, please. I request my colleagues to paste the, whole, the, the particular instruction in the Q&A channel or chat maybe, because if I didn't sign up in any other region, that's not gonna work. So make sure your home region is one of these three, please. All right. So input your address information and some of them are optional, so you can skip them. And then finally, you click the checkbox for agreement and start my free trial. 
I'm sure most of you have been through this process already. Uh, once you do this, we will be, uh, you'll be seeing uh, a progress page, uh, finishing setting up of your account. And then once that is done, you will be navigated to the OCI console homepage on the screen. You see that your account is currently being set up and some features will be unavailable. You will receive an email after setup complete. So while you are here, um, you, do, you need to, um, I repeat again, for those of you who just joined, you need to sign up only in few regions, that is Germany, Frankfurt, UK South, London, sorry, UK South London, US West, Phoenix, and Germany only, please. Okay, so once you're done with this, you will be receiving an email the two ways, one is uh, automatically you're redirected to this particular page in OCI console and just stay there. And then uh, we will go ahead with the next step that is opening up the lab guide and then you know, looking through the steps and then proceed with the next step. However, by accident, if you have closed this particular window, I suggest to use, go to your inbox and verify your email where you have your Oracle Cloud account details. After the account is uh, oh, provisioning is finished, you will receive an email with your cloud account name. And then make sure you remember your password. Uh, once you go to cloud.oracle.com slash free, you will be able to sign in again. Most likely, um, uh, I expect everyone to just be on the page and do not close your browser because that's, that's where you're gonna get started now. Okay. So if for someone, if it's taking time, please do wait. You may also ask my colleagues for help. Yes, Nalini just posted uh, in chat window for you guys to make sure of the home regions. This is very important, I repeat again, to choose only these three home regions, any of these three, please. And if you already have a cloud account somewhere else, and if it is having, if it is comes under these home regions, that's completely fine. You don't need to have a fresh cloud account now, okay? And you don't need to be on free trial too. You don't need to be, your trial can be expired. That's completely fine. Or encourage you, for those of you who registered with your email, you can have an additional cloud account now because it's whitelisted. And you will get cloud credits that you can use for 30 days. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so this is the email that you see. If you have closed your browser, or maybe you're interested, you can take a look at your inbox. And this it shows you the cloud account and the username. And there's a link to sign into Oracle Cloud. Okay. And I, I have actually got some credits in Singapore dollars. It might be different for you, depending on your region. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm hoping most of you would have gone through this process and have already finished signing up for Oracle Cloud free trial account. If not, please proceed as the first step. Let me just go back quickly because this is very important to have an account first. Although our workshop says that we have different environments to work on, but we encourage you to use Apex services today and because of the advantages that we already discussed. So for those of you who just joined, this is the sign up link. And in the chat window, my colleagues already pasted you for you the home regions that you can choose from, okay? Okay. So hoping that everyone has finished. We'll be anyways waiting for one or two minutes again. Yeah, if it's asking address, just enter your, um, your hometown or whatever details. There are certain items, certain fields which are mandatory, which are optional. So just pick up only the mandatory ones. You can just leave the remaining one. There no, will not be any communication to your postal address as such. Okay. Well, the second step is, or the most important one for us is to have another browser or maybe another tab open and have this 
workshop lab guide open apex.oracle.com slash go slash apex hyphen js slash lab so this is the shortcut for this github uh, page for our live labs workshop we also have the qr code there so you can use the qr code scan the qr code and then open the lab guide apex plus server side javascript workshop and a quick reminder because we are going to get started with the hands-on lab in two minutes you can post all your questions comments and issues in the q a panel my colleagues are there happy to assist you whether you're stuck with your uh, signing up process, whether your email is not going through or you don't have any message or you don't see anything at all, you can post it and you, you can submit one question with all the information so that my colleagues can you know, easily try the question or issue. Um, please do include the region name, the page and step number in the lab guide where you're stuck at and also the error message text. Okay, so we are happy to help you out and the goal is to get started with Apex surveys and do the uh, tasks in this workshop complete. I remember your service is going to be there continuing going forward. So you don't need to worry. Even after the workshop, you can use your Apex instance as is. Okay, so right. I request my colleagues to also please paste the lab workshop. URL again in the chat window for the benefit of those who just join. Okay. Okay. So that's the end of the slide deck. And now we are ready to get started with the lab. Okay. Let me just show my browser. I'm hoping. Everyone here already have signed up the account. Okay. So this is the lab guide that I'm talking to you about, Apex Plus Server Side JavaScript. And so you already have your browser opened. I'm going to get started with signing up to my cloud account now. So cloud, you don't need to do this because you're already on the OCI console page. So let me just get started with this. Cloud account name, if you're already signed out, then you can do this. Otherwise, there is no need for you to do this. If you're signed up just now, you will be already in the OCI console homepage. Please stay there and then we can proceed with the steps. Okay, so this is the page that Hopefully, every one of you will be seeing now. If not, if you close your browser, then please go to your inbox and then check your email and get back uh, to the OCI console page, please. All right. If you're having any issues with viewing the, um, the slide as, as well as the, the demonstration, please do post your questions in the Q&A channel also. So, Hopefully everything is good now so far and let's get started, okay? Well, we already had an introduction, so I would leave it to you um, for this work um, to read later on uh, about the uh, details about Apex and Apex workspace and all those stuff. So, so as you see in the hands on app guide, there are three different types of environment, uh, actually. I mean, actually two different type of environments. We have Apex service and we also have Oracle Autonomous Database, okay? So you can use both, by, but for this workshop, as I requested already, let us use only Apex service, okay? So that's the focus of the lab is to showcase Apex service um, and the steps are documented accordingly. So there might be typos here and there. There might be screenshot mismatches here and there. If you feel like giving some feedback, feel free to go paste that in the Q&A channel, otherwise, uh, you can follow my instructions. If there are any issues, typos here and there, please do um, excuse us. And then, you know, I can help you out if you're stuck somewhere. Okay. So introduction. We already discussed about what this hands-on lab guide, uh, hands-on lab is all about. Okay, database 21C, we have this new MLE feature. 
So now JavaScript developers can be part of the Apex application development code as well. From 21C, um, we can leverage a massive set of JavaScript libraries for our tasks that are hard to solve in PL SQL. So not just PL SQL, but you can also use um, JavaScript in your Apex application. So what are we going to do today? We're going to, we already got the free development environment, right? We're done with this. And then the next step is we're going to build a, a spreadsheet application. And then we'll prepare a report and write some pseudocode. We will then extend Apex application using JavaScript. And finally, we'll use external module. So these are the objectives, the leading objectives of uh, this particular workshop. Okay, so navigate to getting started and you see Oracle Apex application development service. So this is the first step. Once you get into OCI console, you will be doing the first step is create an Apex service, okay? So as you see here, this is a prerequisite. So once you sign up for your free cloud account, you are in your OCI console that you see uh, here on my screen. And then you can proceed with the next step with option one, Apex application development service. So you really need to uh, do these particular steps to create or to provision an Apex service. And then the next step, we're gonna create um, an Apex um, uh, workspace and then proceed further. Okay. So for those of you who have already started, please proceed with the steps. There is no need for you to wait for me at a particular step. If you're comfortable enough, the instructions are pretty straightforward. You can go through the steps and then perform the steps accordingly. If you're stuck anywhere, please let my colleagues know about it. So I see a couple of folks just joined. So who just joined, you need to sign up for a free trial account first, and then you need to only utilize three services or three home regions, as you see in the screen and also in the chat window, Germany, US West and UK South is Frankfurt, Phoenix and London are the three home regions that you should be signing up for because this uses 21 seat tests. Okay, let's go ahead. So I'm gonna skip all these things and just go ahead with looking up the Apex application development service. So we are on Oracle Cloud Console already. Yeah, for those of you who are still seeing, maybe you just need to refresh your browser if you see that message continuously, or maybe just wait and just go to your inbox. Sometimes message just pops up and then your account is already created for you. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead. The first thing is, in your OCI console, and this is what is called as Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, OCI console, okay? So there are different options here. And then you click this left navigation menu and you see here, developer services, right? So click this developer services and you see Apex application development, Apex instances. So click this one. I had a work Apex service already that I just terminated because I would like to create a new Apex service. You can create uh, two Apex services actually. So this is a free trial. I'm in free trial as well. So let me just go ahead and then click create Apex service. Okay. So this is the next step. So what I did so far from the OCI console, I clicked the left navigation menu and then I came to developer services. And then from developer services, I navigated to Apex application development. And now here, I'm gonna click create Apex service. Okay, so in create Apex service, you need to provide some basic information for the Apex service. All right, so you can change the database name if you want. And before that, actually you'll be prompted because I already have my compartment chosen. If you go through the instructions carefully, it tells you that you need to choose the compartment as well. 
okay so you need to choose your compartment and then just pick up that one that's just created and then you proceed to the next step to enable always free option so what i'm going to do is my compartment is uh, picked up by default and so the next step is i'm turning on or switching on the always free option if you don't do that then you will not be able to see database 21 c so please make sure you turn up always free and here is the tip you should choose database 21 c please watch carefully there are two versions available here and choosing database version you should be picking up 21 c and not the default 91 c so we don't choose anyone and just proceed with the next step it goes through the wizard process and probably if some of you would have ignored that step and then click create apex service that's completely fine just go back to the uh, same step again you can create one more apex service and this time make sure you choose 21 c for those of you who are not able to see 21 c the reason could be your home region is different than the one that we just showed up your home region should be phoenix london and frankfurt or else the other thing could have happened is probably you wouldn't turn on always free this is the default always free is turned off or switched off by default so make sure you turn on this one please watch the step or maybe please go through the instructions again okay okay so let's do this choose database version database 21c and as you see on the screen free tire apex service using 21c cannot currently be upgraded to paid instances so if you plan to upgrade to paid instances and if you expect 21c at the moment that's not possible we are just using this particular apex service for our demonstration or for you know the workshop purpose only okay so enter admin credentials you enter your password just going to get grab my password enter some password and confirm password okay and you can leave all of them as is the only important thing here is to turn on always free so you see database 21c and make sure you enter your password and do remember the password because this is something which you want to use when you will be using creating a workspace again so make sure you note your password on please okay and let's go ahead and create apex service um if it's an oracle cloud account if it's a, a free account it's not possible as far as i know to change your home region like i mentioned your um, email id is already whitelisted with us so it's pretty easy for you to sign up for a new account right now if you'd like to have a new account please do reach out to my colleagues in the q and a channel and they can whitelist again for you if it's not done yet so uh, you should be able to create a new account so once you cre create apex service on the screen as you see it shows provisioning it just takes it takes uh, two minutes max and that displays available in the meantime i'll come to the lab guide okay so from provisioning the status changes to available in two minutes so just provisioning for me wait for one or two minutes so after this is available the next step is to click launch apex for those of you who are able to proceed further please do so you don't need to wait for my instructions i'm going a little slow because i would like everyone to understand and follow the basic step because the remaining steps are pretty easy um, and easy to follow but 
setting up the account and uh, setting up a ABEX service and you know provisioning an uh, ABEX service is uh, um, it's important. All right. Issues provisioning for me. Right. Let me just go back. So the next step, once it becomes available, is to click Launch Apex, as you see on the screen. Launch Apex. And then you need to enter the password for the administration services. Remember the password that we just entered uh, while creating the Apex service. So that's going to be the same one. So once it asks you for Launch Apex, you will be actually launching Apex administration services. So that's going to take you to the instance administration and you will be signing into the instance administration. And then the next step is to create workspace. So as an instance administrator, you will be creating workspace. And do remember you can create multiple workspaces of your choice. So it's not going to be limited to one workspace as such, which Apex allows you to with multiple workspaces, multiple developers, and multiple end users. There is no limit as such. Speaking of more time, maybe. So let me just go back. So what you do is click Launch Apex once you see the status to be available. And then you input your um, the database admin password that you just used, and then click Create Workspace. Okay, and do remember the workspace uh, uh, password as well. So when you're creating a workspace, if you're entering a password, do remember that that's going to be used across um, uh, when you sign into your application or when you run your applications actually. So if you enter database username and you enter password, it automatically picks up the database username as the workspace name. So you don't need to change that and then click create workspace. So then there are two options for you. Either you can log out completely and then log into your workspace or just click the workspace name on the administration homepage and that takes you to the login page of your workspace. It still shows provisioning for me for some reason. Oh, now it shows available for me. Uh, if you're uh, encountering issues with um, issues with Apex service, uh, can you please try on create uh, again creating an Apex service because you can create one again and see if that works. Yes, yeah, I, I, I see the messages in uh, q and channel. So if, yeah, my colleague is gonna help you out. Okay, so now that I have my um, Apex service available, what I'm gonna do is click Launch Apex. We just discussed this. So click Launch Apex. That's gonna take me to another tab. And I'll be, redirected to the Apex Administration Services page, Apex Instance Administration, basically. So on my screen, you see that I do have Okay, sorry. Password. And then the next step from here is to create a workspace. Launch Apex button will be enabled upon 
turning off the uh, sorry upon convert i mean changing the state from provisioning to um, available you should see that if not you might want to just refresh your browser once or maybe you can see that which which um, they also sometimes my problem with the browser so um, you might want to even change your browser and see if that works for you okay so the next step is let's get started with creating a workspace so i'm going to create a workspace here okay uh, this is a database user for me and then okay let me just give another one yeah, yes. so i'm inputting password and this is what i'm going to use for my signing it to my apex okay so save password workspace is created you have two options now okay so someone is asking for a lab guide so please do watch the chat window if you're just trying late please do watch the chat window and my colleagues will paste the lab guide there for you okay all right so either i can click this or i can just sign out and then go ahead and then sign in again to my workspace so here what i'm going to do is signing to my workspace workspace username password okay one thing done so what did we do so far we created a oracle cloud free trial account and then we logged in we signed in from the oci console we went to um developer services and then we clicked apex application development and then we created an apex service as part of creating an apex service we noticed that it is creating an underlying autonomous database for us and then we ensured that the database is 21c and before that we made sure that it is a free trial account it, it, it's it's free service basically we turned on the switch for the free services or always free and then after turning on the always free we noticed that we can have two different options on the database so the default is 19c but for our workshop we like to have 21c because we are going to do mle feature today so we picked up 21c and then we proceeded to the next step okay and after that we clicked launch apex and from launch apex that navigated us to the instance administration page wherein we input the password and then logged into instance administration and then it allowed us to create a workspace i remember like i mentioned you can always go back to your instance administration page right the next time when you click launch workspace you can always create multiple apex workspaces too so just no need for a single workspace all right so once you are there in the workspace uh to get into workspace either you click the uh, workspace name okay or maybe you know you can sign out and then sign in with the username and password okay let's get back so i'm just going to close the oci console window for some time i don't need that i don't need the workspace okay so where are we in the hands on lab guide we finished the task of creating apex development service and we also finished the task of um, creating an apex workspace well the next one is the actual lab of creating the spreadsheet application and then extending it preparing the report and write some pseudo code and etc so let's do this next step is creating an application from a spreadsheet so for those of you who are able to proceed so far it's really good please go ahead with the next step after you create your workspace the next thing that you want to do is start from lab 1 here on the screen you see there are one two three four labs so these are the four labs as part of the workshop we finished the prerequisite so far we finished creating a trial account we completed apex service we completed creating an apex workspace now the actual lab starts and the first one is creating an application from a spreadsheet you know that we can build we can uh, create uh, applications from we can convert or transform your spreadsheet into beautiful 
web applications in Apex. Okay, and most of you have already tried this. And for those of you who are new, this is will be very interesting to see how uh, you can convert or transform the spreadsheet data into an application. Of course, we're not going to stop there. We're going to extend the application further. All right, let's go. Expand all tasks. In the lab guide, you'll see there are a couple of tasks for you. Okay, so task one, task two, task three. Task one is loading project and task data. And task two is creating an application. Task three is running and exporting a new app. If you're stuck with any of the step, please feel free to share with my, four, with my colleagues in the q and channel. Okay, all right. Let me just go ahead and do the first step. Loading project and tasks data. So what we are doing here, we're going to Apex homepage, go to app builder, create a new application from a file, copy and paste using the load, load data wizard. And then we're gonna click the sample data set. We're gonna load a project task. We're gonna enter the project task with the table name. And then finally, we're gonna click load data. Let's do the steps until this so far. Okay. So before that, I'd like to show you something here. This is not, I guess it's not covered in the hands-on lab guide, but just you might be um, interesting for you. So there are different modes that I can turn on here. So right now I'm in automatic mode. I can turn light mode as well. And I would like to turn to dark mode because this is the time which, which we most of us would be using because we would be doing for long hours, right? So I'm gonna turn this to dark mode. This is not covered in your lab guide, but you know you can proceed with this, but some, someone might be having a question of how did this person change this uh, mode now? So I just wanna quickly show you. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn this to dark mode, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and then do the steps. So in Apex, once you sign into your workspace, you see app builder, you see SQL workshop, you see team development, and you see app gallery. App developer is the one which you're gonna build your applications, is the location where you're gonna build your database web application. SQL workshop is the one which you're gonna be Acquiring your database, be SQL commands or SQL scripts, or you know, write some SQL scripts and you know run them on your database. And then um, app gallery. So this has changed a little bit in the latest Apex. So you don't need to discuss much about this at the moment. But yeah, it's pretty much about let us focus on app builder. And I would leave the remaining things for you to explore for those of you um, who are new to Apex. Okay, clicking app builder. You see create a new app, or you can also click create. So I'm gonna click create a new app. There are three different options for me here. New application, where I just create a blank application and then hook up my database tables, underlying database tables later, and then build your pages on top of that. That's one thing which you can do, but this is not something which we're doing in this workshop today. In this workshop, we're gonna use the from a file uh, option. So I'm clicking this from a file, okay? And I have different options. Like you can drag and drop your CSV, XLSX, text, XML, JSON, JSON files. So I would encourage you to explore this particular uh, feature later on. But in this workshop, I would encourage you, or would suggest you rather to focus on the steps as is and just proceed uh, with the steps as is. Might be some issues here and there, which my colleague can help you out. So from here, I'm gonna select project and task spreadsheet data. These are the built-in or the sample data sets that we have shipped with Apex. okay? So I've just loaded spreadsheet data. I've just loaded project and task data, scrolling down and then clicking next. Okay, now, in the lab guide, it says that we need to enter. So please make sure you enter the table names and the other names as is, because some of the SQL commands, some of the SQL queries uh, will be using these table names. So you might have any issues later on. So uh, otherwise, 
Um, if you choose to change the table names, please make a note of them so that you can change the priorities later as well. But I would, I would encourage you, it will be easy to follow the steps as is, especially with the table names and, and other things, okay? Um, for, the work, for the workspace name, there is no need that you, you need to use only demo as such. You can use any of your workspace name as is, because in my case, I used um, Apex APAC as the workspace name, so that's completely fine. But it's, it, you need to be very careful, especially with the table names as such. Okay, so project task is a table name. So I'm just going to use this and then come here. Is this project task? And then just scroll down. You see that. Um, I can configure uh, columns to load and do all those stuff. So I'm not going to do all those things right now. Not going to preview also, just click load data. You need to do a lot of steps again. So it shows a progress bar and table project task is created with 73 rows. And the next step is click create application. Let's see what are we gonna do? So, so far we have loaded the data, okay? And then the next step is, the next task is creating an application. So now you already see that there is a create application button over there. So one way of doing this is proceeding with the step as is. Um, just for your information, if you don't click uh, create application, you might be wondering like, how do I get to a application later on? So you can just go back to the object browser in SQL workshop, click the table and there you see a tab with create app. And you click create app that will also again, navigate to the same create application wizard. But let us follow the steps as is. Okay, so create application and you enter a name um, for your projects and then you select the features and then click create application. So let's do that. So click create application. Spinning around. All right. So I'm here with project task as a application name, picked up the same. And you see that Apex has done best guess and come up with a, a list of pages. Don't remove any of the pages. We will be needing these pages in the application. So don't do any kind of uh, modifications at this moment. But in general, you can always add additional pages here at this step. This is a one-stop shop for uh, building your application. It's a simple visa, right? Apex is a low-code application development tool. So far, we have not done any single piece of code. However, um, you can use um, SQL, PL SQL, and JavaScript in your um, code. Um, here, in this particular step, with we just going ahead uh, with creating an application straight away. We're not... Um, doing anything, but here, let's click check all so that you would like to have all of the features in your application. Let's say click create application. It shows the application. It shows uh, the creation process. It's gonna be a few seconds, creating features. like it's going through. Okay, uh, let's see in the meantime, what's the next step? So the next task for us in this particular lab is running and exploring the application. So we will run the application. I ask you to remember the password. So note down a password uh, uh, for your database user, which is the workspace username and password. And then you click to the navigation and explore the application further. So that would be the next step. Okay. So the application is ready and this is the application homepage and you see different types of different number of pages and different types of pages for different features and stuff like that. So let's click run application. So at this moment, it is uh, utilizing the, uh, um, the, the built-in application express credentials, right? So uh, Apex, allows you to use different types of authentication to your uh, applications. You can use the built-in Apex credentials. You can use your database credentials. You can use your um, single sign-on 
you can use LDAP, um, you can use, uh, uh, sorry, uh, recall, uh, social signing. Um, uh, you can create a social signing so that you can have your Gmail or maybe you know Facebook or LinkedIn account. You can hook that up with your Apex uh, application uh, authentication. And you can also have your own custom authentication. So in this workshop, which is going ahead with using um, the built-in uh, Apex authentication scheme, so click sign in. Uh, let's quickly explore the application and proceed to the next lab. So this is the home page, navigation menu. If you click this guy, turn on and turn off. Okay, so you see that this is a cards page basically. It shows a dashboard, a project task search page, a project task report, and a calendar page. You can explore each of these pages either by clicking here or clicking here. Now, before going ahead with this one, let's click administration and see what's in there. So administration page, if you remember, we actually clicked uh, check all for features there. So all of them would be um, included in your administration here. And then you see all of the uh, you know, corresponding entries over here. So we're not going to bother much about that, but let's go ahead. Let's see what's there in the dashboard. You see here, Apex has nicely created a dashboard for you with four different charts. This is completely based on the, the data which is included in the spreadsheet, okay? The next one is a project task search, which is a faceted search. Um, like you see here, uh, this is the report and here is the left side is a facet. So you can just select any one next and then your report gets filtered accordingly. Okay, so you might wanna just have a quick look at these things. Like you can turn to a pie chart and then you can also turn to the different chart type and then see that. And then the next one is, uh, this is the one which we're going to use maximum in our uh, workshop, the project task report. And there is a calendar also available. With some entries, this is not clickable, but just the basic entries which are available. All right, let's go to home page now. So we're here. And then now I'm going to go to the hands-on lab guide. So I assume that people would have already completed this particular lab. If not, we'll just give two more minutes and then we'll go to the next lab, okay? So let's have a quick review of what we have done in this lab. The total workshop includes four labs. We'll see how many we can do. We'll try to complete all the four of them. But the first lab is creating an application from a spreadsheet. So what we did in this lab is uh, we actually went to um, the app builder in the Apex homepage, workspace homepage. And then we click um, create app and create application wizard opens up and then we will see, we see there from a file and uh, you know, other, other two options. We clicked from a file option and then we clicked copy and paste where we wanted to copy and paste the spreadsheet data. Um, Apex comes uh, with some sample data sets and we picked up uh, the project and task spreadsheet data. So that data is copied in. And then uh, we then we proceeded to the next step of uh, loading the data. And then we created an application on top of that. So during this process, the table is created basically on top of the table is an application created for you. Okay, um, that's, the, that's the entire uh, lab uh, is actually about. And then we run the application and then running the application, we'll see, um, you know, the different uh, pages over here. Uh, like you have a dashboard page, you have project task search page, you have project task report, calendar, and that, that stuff. Then the other one is um, uh, we explore each of these pages, like dashboard has some charts in it, four charts built in it. Project task search is a faceted search page, basically. To the left side, you have facets, and to the right side, you see, uh, you know, um uh the the class report and then you 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 notice that uh uh you know as you select uh, one of the uh check boxes the report is filtered accordingly and you see that and then the next one is an interactive report project task report and then calendar so and then we also looked into administration now one thing that we'd like to quickly show you which is not covered in the workshop is the theme roller uh, this is not covered i just want to quickly show you so that you can change your style to uh different uh theme style to with a current, for example, to redwood light. So this means these automatically these changes, but I'm not going to show that today. I'm just not a 
set as current. Okay, I'm just going because might be some screenshot mismatches here in this. So let's continue with this. And just want to give an additional tip or information for you, like how you can change your theme style so that you can be aligned with the Redwood Light the theme um, uh, of the Oracle. Okay, so let's go ahead with the next one. I hope uh, most of you have done that. If not, then please do follow the steps in the lab guide and proceed. Lab two. Lab two has two tasks for us. The first one is we will be, um, okay. just give me a minute. Sorry. Okay, so lab two is about uh, preparing the report and test the pseudocode. So what we will be doing in this is we will be using SQL workshop to write some pseudocode, test the pseudocode, and then prepare the interactive report that we created. Okay, so let me just expand our task. So uh, we will prepare the report page. Basically, we have a project column and we will be adding a select list for all the projects. At this moment, let's see how the project task uh, report is basically. This is how it looks like as of now. So we would like to make some changes to this particular report. Let's see how do we do that in this lab, okay? Um, and then we will be um, adding a button to extend the end date for all the tasks of a selected project by one day, and then we'll create a pseudocode in SQL workshop to achieve that, right? So basically, if you see here, each of the projects has, um, task has um, end date, and for some of the tasks, we would like to extend the end date. So let's see how we can do using some pseudocode here. So while extending the end date, we need to avoid. So instead of uh, doing for every uh, uh, status, instead of for every task, we do only for open and pending tasks. So we're gonna avoid the closed uh, tasks and let's focus only on the remaining. So let's go through the steps one by one. First thing is using SQL workshop to write some pseudocode. So, as we already discussed, this lab is about um, server-side JavaScript. So how do you write a, a, your server-side JavaScript in different uh, uh, areas of Apex? We're gonna start with SQL commands and how do we write that? Let's see, okay? So in this particular uh, task, what we're gonna do is go to SQL workshop, SQL commands and enter some SQL code. Select from project task where project equals to email integration and status doesn't, is not equal to closed. So we're gonna extend, uh, we're gonna first see which are the projects which are not closed, okay, which are the open and pending. Okay, let's see that. So for this in third step, as you see, you need to paste the code in SQL commands and set the language attribute to either SQL, PL SQL, and then click the run button. So here, I'm just going here and then going to SQL workshop. In SQL workshop, you see SQL commands. And here you see, because this is database 21C, you see there is SQL, PL SQL, and JavaScript MLE also. So for us, in this particular step, we just need only SQL. So just paste it by this particular SQL code and then run this. Now, if you see here, the task, or the project is the same, email integration, okay? And for the two different tasks, this is open and this is pending. So for this, we would like to extend the end date to one day. So that is a task for us. So how do we do that? Let's go back. Now, let's examine this particular code. So we would like to write some server-side JavaScript and that's, let's see, how do we use that? We, we can utilize the DBMS MLE package in database 21C. And this package actually allows developers to switch the context from PL SQL to JavaScript. So we can run and evaluate this particular code. Let me just click copy the code first. So here you see copy button. You can run and copy this code and then run it in your uh, SQL commands actually. So this particular script, I run this in, uh, in, uh, in database JavaScript code. So let's copy the code. Okay. And then we will be pasting the PL SQL and SQL commands and changing the language attribute to PL SQL and then run the button. Let's see. 
So I'm going to clear this and then pasting the entire DBMS MLE package. Just scroll down a bit to see this better. All right. So you think it's a context to DBMS MLE, and then you will be actually extending it. Um, if you see that update project task at end date equals to end date plus one. Um, and this is going to extend the end date for us. So um, if you just before that, from the previous query, you see that this is uh, uh, 918 and this is 928. Okay. So let me just run this. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. So either you can have your SQL or you can have your PL SQL. Okay. So here, if you see that um, the task with ID 29, the status open has been extended successfully and task with ID 58, the status pending has been extended successfully. Now, let's run the query again to see if that's really true and if it really worked out for us. So copying the code again, the next SQL query, select from project task where project equals to copying this guy. And then now let me just run this. Okay, so it shows 919 and 929 now. So that's cool. So the end date has been extended. Good. Okay, so one thing done. And then, okay, so we used how to uh, DBMS MLE and then we actually uh, utilize PL SQL there. But although the code looks neat, we made it more simpler with the JavaScript server side code. So here, if you see, as function extend project task status, if status is, is not equals to closed or written true, else written false. So I'm sure you understand the code. So just copy and it's gonna do the same thing, extend the same thing, but this time, what we are going to do, we are going to run this by changing the language attribute to JavaScript MLE. And this is database 21 c So obviously you can run this here or here, paste this, and then now change the language to JavaScript MLE, okay? And then now it's 919 and 929, right? So let's see, it should be extended again to one more day. Run this. So again, we see the message that the status were open and status pending has been uh, extended successfully. Now, we're gonna query again and see if that has actually happened. Go back. And let's go back to particular step. Run the query again, copy and run the query again, the SQL statement. Okay. This time change from uh, JavaScript MLE to SQL or PL SQL. Run this. Now you see 920 and 930. Okay. So this has been extended successfully for us. So we now saw how to utilize uh, your uh, server-side JavaScript in SQL commands area in Apex. Okay, so that's done. Let, let's go to the next task in this lab, which is preparing a report. Now that we have uh, tested the pseudocode, let's make some changes to the project task report. Like I mentioned, when we were exploring the, um, the application, the focus would be more on the interactive report page, right? The project task report, which is an interactive report. Apex comes with different types of reports, like classic report, interactive report, interactive grids, fasted search, cards, and different types of uh, reports that you can create with Apex. So in this um, workshop, we're going to change, make some changes to this particular interactive report. Okay. So let's go back, go to project task report. This is how it looks like right now. We're gonna change this now. We have project and we don't want project to be displayed in the report. So different ways of doing it. So here, what we're gonna do is click columns. And then from here, you just choose project and click the back button here, remove button. So that is not gonna be displayed in report. So using the shuttle, in the shuttle, you're gonna move from display in report to do not display in report. So click that and say apply. The moment I say apply, 
you'll see how the report has changed. Project has been disappeared from this particular. It's still there, but it's not visible to us. It's not displayed in the report. So this is the first thing that we did. Okay. And then we need to save this report and save the report to primary. Let's go back, go to actions, report, save report. And then you save the report as default report settings. You can choose primary or alternative. In this workshop, let's choose primary and say apply. The report is saved as a primary report now. Okay, so now we're gonna make some more changes. You need to click page four in the developer toolbar and right click on the content body and click create region menu item. And then you're gonna create a region on this page basically. Let's do that. So this is uh, the developer toolbar, okay, basically. And then I'm clicking this, edit page four. Now I'll be navigated to the page designer, which is the edit mode of a particular, of a page in Apex. So I'm clicking this and uh, I will, I'm here. So the next step for me is to right click here on the regions of content body, right click and say, click create region. The moment I do so, it shows up as a new region here. And I'm gonna update that particular with uh, some more information. So I clicked new region, change the title to project and sequence to five, and then create a page item on this. So what I'm gonna do, change the title to projects. And right now the sequence is 20 because it's appearing later after the project class. There are two regions on this page, one is project class and projects now, okay? So if I change the sequence this to five and just click here, notice that it moved up, up, up above project class. So it is the first one that's gonna appear now. So the sequence has changed to from 20 to five. So that's what I did and then click create page item. You need to create a page item on this. And then you need to make the page item as a, a select list basically. Let's do that. So right click projects and then click create page item. And then name this particular page item as P4 project. And then right now it is text field. I'm gonna change this to a select list. The moment I change this, you notice that is an error. So we need to fix that one. Let's go down or alternatively, if you just click that error, you'll be navigated to a particular context in uh, the, a, the, the page. Here it shows a list of values. I need to actually create a SQL query or maybe static values or do some function returning, body returning SQL query, a shared component. So I'm gonna go use SQL query here input some SQL query. Okay, so what's the query here? Select distinct project, project uh, project D, project R from project R. So if you have changed the table name, please make sure you change it here also, okay? So let's go back here, click this guy. I can also validate this. If I just click this, I can also validate this too. Validations are critical, so that's not, they are no extent, but just want to show you as an additional thing. Display extra values, turning this off. Display null value as is for null display value. Let me just put that like project. Set. And let's save the changes. Okay, the next thing is for us to create a button. The button will be used in the next lab to in, in, initiate the extend project task process. Okay, right click region buttons and click create button menu item. So what we're gonna do is go here. Right click and create button. Okay. And set the property values for this new button, name extend project task. Extend project task. Click on label, it automatically picks up the name. Sequence is 20 and button position is right interactive report search. Sequence is 40 at the moment, let's change this to 20. 
and then button position here is right of interactive report search bar. The uh, instructions is only search. It is right of interactive report search bar. So click this. And then what we're going to do is click on template options and update the time to warning. Click OK. Scroll down a bit. Under appearance, you see template options. Click this. OK, the type is normal. Just change this to warning. OK, and then what else? Click OK on uh, save and run the page. OK, you can save and on the page now to see how it looks like now. All right. So this is how the page should look like now. So we have extend project tasks, which are button we created just now. And this is a select list. It, it won't show up anything. Okay, all right now, just click this. Just, just you can just have a look at this. Um, that is gonna be uh, a select list actually. Save and run page. And that's how it is. Now we're gonna do, uh, some more changes to page four. So we're just going to go to project task report, task, task report. What we're gonna do, update the following properties because we need to get the report refreshed. So for where clause, project equals to P4 project, do the following one here. And for the where clause, let's update this because we already have a page item created and page items to submit is a P4 project. Page items to submit is P4 project. And then afterwards we need to create a dynamic action. Okay, so that's done. And then right click on P4 project page item and click create dynamic action. So here on this particular one, we create a dynamic action. Client side interactivity, let's see. And then we change the name of dynamic action to on change and then change the attributes to. Let's go here, change the name to on change. And then action is refresh, selection type is region, project does. Right. So we need to set those things also. So here, action is um, refresh, okay? And what should get refreshed? The region should get refreshed. Which region is it? It's the project tasks. Okay, so save and run the page now. So we should be now be able to, the moment we, um, choose the project, let's say for example here, the corresponding task would be displayed for us. Email integration, we scroll down here a little bit. So this is how the region should be refreshed for you. The report region should be refreshed for you as soon as uh, you select these things. Okay, so that's it. We are done with lab two as of now. So what we did is we created, um, we used a SQL pseudo code in a SQL workshop. And then we, in the interactive report, we made some changes. We got rid of the project from the display. And then we made some changes to the project report. So we have, we added one more region to the top of the page so that it displays the project in select list for us. Because we removed it from here. Now we would like to have the project up above so that the moment we select a project, the corresponding task, start date and date and other details should be displayed for us. And for this, we created a page item. And then we also created some button. We also created a dynamic action for the page to be refreshed. So that's pretty much we are done. Okay. Okay. Now let's go to lab three, extending your application using JavaScript. We have two tasks in this extend report with JavaScript process. And then we also have um, add JavaScript validation to form. Okay. So let's see what we're gonna do here. We already created the extend uh, project task button already. So now we add a validation and we execute some JavaScript code to 
So what is you'll execute a JavaScript code to extend that task once you click on extend project task button, and then the validation is going to actually prevent um, updating um, if the task status is closed. Okay, so only you will be able to update the open and pending tasks. So that's what how we are going to implement using JavaScript. Navigate to page four and select processing. Right click processing and click create process menu item. Okay, so from here, from the developer toolbar, going to processing. Right click processing and click create process. Okay. So the next step is where we are implementing JavaScript code, uh, so I said JavaScript in processes and validations. So give it a name, extend Java, extend project task. Okay. Give it a name, extend project task. By default, the language is set to PL SQL. So we're gonna use JavaScript MLE. So a changed language and the source to JavaScript MLE now. And then we're going to copy the code, which is actually going to extend, update the end date to one day for those of the projects are still open and pending. So this is how you were using um, your JavaScript code in your Apex uh, processes. Here, say OK. Enter that code, and then the next step for us is uh, when button pressed to server side to extend the extend project. So what we do is here scroll down after entering this one. When button pressed, you need to select the button extend project task, which we have already created. Otherwise, it just executes as is if you don't want to do that. So now let's click day one run. Okay. So let's see, um, select the email integration project and then we gonna uh, test this particular one. Go here, go to the project email integration. If you see email integration, we have uh, get RFPs and purchase backup server or the open and pending ones and with the end is 920 and 930. Let's click extend project tasks. So it, the moment I click that, the end date has been extended. The process has run in the backend, uh, which utilizes the JavaScript uh, uh, code. And uh, you know we, we have set that to the JavaScript MLE and then we, we set the condition to when button press to extend project tasks. And upon clicking that particular button, the end date has been extended to one day, 9.21 and 10 one here for us. So that's as simple as that. Now, let's uh, go to task two, which is uh, adding JavaScript validation to form. Okay, so let's click um, page five in the developer toolbar. So how do you do that? You are already here. So you just click this, any of the edit page. Uh, any of the edit icons. And then on the developer toolbar, you'll see that it has changed to edit page five. So click edit page five. So now you're in page designer for page five. Uh, of course, it uh, goes to the processes that tab. Let's see what we're gonna do now. Okay, we need to create a validation here. So what we do is uh, go here, up here you see validating. So in the previous lab, we created a process and now we are going to create a lab. Okay, someone just um, asked a question, why my complete page refreshes on click on extend project button? Probably you are set, just check your button is set for when button pressed, if, the, if it is the condition is set in your page designer or not. Probably you have not said that. Maybe one of my colleagues can help you. Okay. All right, so right click validating and create a validation. Create validation. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're gonna ensure that nobody can update 
a closed project, a closed task. You can only update an open and um, pending task as such. So that's the task for us. That's where that we're coming up with the validation. Task can be can't be closed. Okay, name. Now for this also, we're going to use JavaScript and also use this validation. The simple one. Okay, scroll down. Because I already used JavaScript MLE, it is defaulting to JavaScript MLE here. That's it. I input the JavaScript expression. And the error message, you need an error message and also an associated item. You can't update assigned to the task has been closed already. So you cannot update close the task as such. And associated item. What is the associated item? The associated item is a P5 assignment. P5 assignment. We're going to save that. Okay, now let's see what's the instruction. Now we get back to project task report and click on edit complete plan task for assign to enter a name or text of your choice and click apply changes. Okay. Let's go back. Uh, Let's click complete plan. So see if we have two closed tasks here, let's try to update one of them. Let's click complete plan and just um, let's try to update something else. Let's see, apply changes. You can't update assigned to. The task has been closed already. So that's close the validation error. Okay, now let's go back. So, so far we have done um, extending the report uh, with the JavaScript process, and we also looked into how we can implement a validation using JavaScript MLE. So two things we have done in this lab, we have extended using JavaScript. So, so far, what we have learned, we have learned how to use JavaScript in um, SQL commands. We also utilize, we also change some report um, and then we came here and introduced a process. And then this process is using actually JavaScript code. And uh, then we came up with a validation with the JavaScript uh, expression, basically. Okay, so that's what we have done. And let's move on to the next lab, which is external, using external modules. I'm hoping that um, you guys are following my instructions carefully and uh, where there are any hints, tips, and things like that. I'm, helping you out. And if, if you're able to proceed further to the next lab and complete all the things, that's completely fine. Um, you don't need to just wait for my instructions in a particular lab, you just go ahead then. So I'll be going um, a little bit slow. Okay, so there are three things here. We'll see how many we can complete, hopefully to complete all the three before the time. So. So far, we have learned to implement in two different areas of Apex, SQL commands and processes and validations in page designer. The next thing is that uh, with MLE feature, actually, we can utilize um, a massive set of JavaScript libraries in your Apex development uh, for things that are a bit complicated or hard to uh, do using build SQL. So um, how nice if, it, if, if your life is made easy with JavaScript when you're using such thing. So how do you? some examples for that. So here we're going to do three external JavaScript libraries and modules here. We're going to use email verification, QR code generation, markdown conversion to HTML. So first we load these modules. These modules will be stored in a table and then we're going to call these tables. We're going to call these modules in our uh, example. So first thing is go to SQL workshop, SQL script, and then click on create button and give it a name as JavaScript modules. So let's go there, go to SQL workshop, SQL scripts, uh, click create, give a script a name, JavaScript modules. Okay, let's have a quick look at the uh, code basically. 
we're creating a table emily module and actually having all of these things like you know the uh, uh, the entire um the for the qr code as well as um uh, you know for the email integration we are setting up everything here so just copy the code maybe time permits you can revisit this and give you the code what it does so go back script editor paste it and then the next step is once you have this run this number of statements three click run now all right so there's a create table statement there's a create uh, replace trigger statements and there is a uh, declare and then so three statements process successfully with no errors right so don't click create application at this point we don't need any more app we'll be using the existing application uh, to utilize these modules all right so far first task is done let's see second task is preparing the form Let's add an email column to the project task table. The project task table currently doesn't have an email column. So let's add that because we're going to use um, a verification of email. Okay. Something like that. Let's go here. So alter table project task, add email column, copy this code, and then run this in SQL commands. So in SQL workshop, go to SQL commands. I'm, I'm hoping people are already familiar with this in the last few steps. So alter table, you're adding a new column. The table is altered. Project task now has an email column. Okay, scroll down a bit. Now navigate to page five in page designer. You know how to do that. So here already, I haven't closed that. Otherwise, you just go to a developer toolbar and click edit page five. My uh, tab is now changing to page designer. Or else, if you're in a page designer mode, you can also change from four if you are in fourth page, you can just click this guy and then you'll be navigated to the fifth page. Or else you simply click uh, page five by going to the application homepage. Okay, so now here, right click items and click to the create page menu item. So what we're gonna do, going a little bit fast from here. So here we have um, project tasks in project tasks, underneath that we have items. So right click and click create page item. Basically, we're going to create the email page item here. Set the property values to page email, project tasks, email, and work capture. So change the name to email and form region. If you just scroll down here. Here, it's form region is project task. And then the column here for us would be email and wildcat is the data type. Just click column, pick up email, and the data type is wildcat. All right. Okay, so let's then change the status, uh, P5 status sequence, and also disable it to the new row. We are just adjusting the form fields basically, the positioning of the form fields. How do we sequence this? Sequence this to 35. Okay, so is this the same one? Oh, so P5 status, sorry. P5 status, P5 status, and then we're gonna change the sequence to 35 and then disable start new row. So it's in the same row as the previous items, basically. Task name and then status on the same row. And then next one, we're gonna disable a few more also. End date, budget, both the ones to be disabled. I'll start. End date and budget, basically. For both of them, start new row is uh, Disable because end date now be on start date and budget is on the cost. So both of them appear on the same row now. Right, next one. P5 email sequence is 75, new row is disabled. P5 and then change the sequence to 75 and then start new row is disabled. So it's moved up a little bit 
and it's on the same two as a sine two. So it's going to be on the same row as a sine two now. That's it. I think this is good. Right click on project tasks from region and click on sub region. Right click on project task from region and click on create sub region menu item. Right click on project task, right click, create sub region. We're gonna go to create two sub regions basically. All right. Um, update hmm. the property with display selectors, region display selectors. I pass display selectors. I pass region display selectors. Good. So right click on display selectors and create uh, again. We're going to create one more sub region for display selectors. So we're all done a bit. Display. Selectors and create a sub region again. It's going to be main and template to blank uh, with attributes for the template. It's going to be main, right? Main and template defects. Scroll down a bit. Template is standard now, it's set to blank with attributes. So, this is something which we have done. Okay, so next, going to the next step in step 12, right click on the main region and click on duplicate. We're going to create two more main, right click on main, and this time we're going to duplicate this. We actually need one more. Uh, duplicate. So we actually need two duplicates because we're going to be doing it. So the first one is a QR code, which is the region. And second one is markdown details, two ones. Main, underneath that is QR code. And the next one is markdown details. Okay, that's it, done. And you should have three sub regions now underneath the display selector regions like that, as they see, you see in the screen. Okay, good. So now click on P5 ID page item and hold the shift key and to the budget item. Going to be on a move all of these items under uh, to main basically. From where? From ID till budget. Let's go back up a bit from ID till budget. Move these guys to main, basically. All these items are moved from project tasks to the main now. Just drag and drop, nothing much. Just drag and drop all these page items. Then for display selectors region, set the property as a template as a kind of container, because we need to display this, right? Let's go back a bit. Scroll up. Okay, see now, good. So for display selectors, um, we need to change this. We need to change the, uh, sorry, uh, template to tabs container and uh, template to tabs container. And then we'll click template options. We need to make some more changes here. Uh, remember actual tab attributes, you need to enable that and tab size is large. So this one, and then tab size is a large and say, okay. We are done with that. And then save button. Okay, and now we'll see how this is displayed. So we can't run this from here. Let's go back and uh, now click any of this particular edit icons. You can now see the change. What do we have done? We have 
main QR code as uh, three different tabs. In the main, we see all these items, which are most on the project task page to this particular one. We see how we have disabled the um, starting in the next new row so that these are cost and budget assigned to email, start date, end date, and task and status are on the same row right now. So this is something which we have achieved in this particular um, lab, in this particular task. Let's go. Task three is loading external JavaScript modules. Let's quickly do that. Let's go to shared components, app builder, application processes. So from here, we go to application homepage, shared component, and uh, application processes. We need to create a button. I need to, sorry, I need to just click create. And then we need to input some details. Set up MLE, setting up MLE, and then on submit after paid submission. Just need on submit. Before computations and validations, on submit after paid submission. Um, before computations and validations, and then click next button. And then what we're gonna do is set the language to MLE. Click the next button. So we're utilizing and um, this one. So here you can also have again PL SQL, but here we are utilizing an application process with the language JavaScript. It's how we are gonna use the external modules now. And then you're going to copy this particular JavaScript code from here. And then paste it here. Click the next button. And then the create process. Okay, so click on the edit page right now. The next thing is doing an email validation. Let us quickly do this. Um, go to page designer in page designer, go to page five. Let's go to page five. We are already in page five here. And then right click on email and then create a validation. So let's come up a little bit. P5 email, right click this guy. And then click validation. So let's give it a name is valid email. valid email and then we've got to change the language to javascript mle and give a javascript expression now required module validator this is already loaded in the table and which is being called now so this is what we are doing now simple java expression we're just utilizing the already loaded module and then error message please enter a valid email address error message please enter a valid email address that's it and now um, let's save this. And now let's go back and then run one of the particular uh, tasks, get RFPs for a new server. Because um, this is an, um, um, uh, a, a task, let's run this, just change, make some changes with, with no email at the moment. So let's enter some value, something like test at their on impact, something like that. Apply changes. It says, please enter a valid email address. Okay, so the validation is counted now. So that works completely fine. And uh, let's expect it to have to an error now. Let's see the next one, the next task. We have two tasks here to complete. Let's see if we can complete both of them today. QR code generation. Let's generate a QR code for one of the web pages and see how that works. We already have the QR code uh, sub-region, uh, which is available as a tab on the project reports page, right? So let's utilize that. On the QR code sub-region, let's go back. Which page is this? Back here, items. Here you come to QR code, you create, um, item, right click QR and click create page item. 
give it a name and URL. The file URL and uh, label is URL and form region is project does and column is URL and data type is my catch. So label is URL, let's give it a uh, all caps. Let's go down, form region. So like this as project task in column is a uh, URL. Right, yeah. it's all good for us. I create one more page item for QR code because we need to test both of them. So let's create one more page item, QR code and make this as blank. Let's create um, page item. And uh, let's not have any label for this, just get rid of this one based on uh, Okay, so here is one tip. This is not documented. Unfortunately, this particular step is missing. Here it is the text field. You need to change this to, of course, the screenshot shows it, but for those of you who have not uh, paid attention to the screenshot, so this is a display image type. Okay, so what I did is change this to from text field to display image based on image stored in based on. So label is label, okay, scroll down a bit under settings. Based on image you are storing page item value. Okay, now right click region buttons and click create button menu. Item. Right click region buttons and create. We need to generate a QR code. So we need a generate QR code button. Call this as generate QR code. A label is generate QR code. And then sequence is one, but needs next. Button position is next. And it is hot. So the button is hot. Let's enable that. Template option style to simple, let's click style. Just style to simple. Database action, SQL update is going to update uh, the database as well, the table as well. Scroll down a bit. Database action is SQL update action, it's going to store it. Processing tab, script data. Tab, right click process, create process, and I'm going to create a process now. Generate QR code. It's going to actually generate a QR code for us. And it's going to be a JavaScript MLE, and we'll input the JavaScript expression. The JavaScript code now. Scroll down, copy, paste the JavaScript code in here. When button press generate Java code, then this that as generate QR code. See if this should be able to run now and generate the JavaScript code. Okay, so let's go back. Oops. So let's go to page four, run this page now. Okay, get RFPs for server. We have QR code now. Let's enter a um, value. Let's see. For example, here in apex.oracle.com. And let's click generate QR code. Oh, see, we need to close this in as well because that is a validation error of this. Let's 
let's fix that first. And then let's come here, generate a QR code. Now let's get generate QR code. And generates a QR code for us. And that's it. So with that particular lab. So we have generated QR code for this particular web page now using the JavaScript external module that we have loaded into Apex. Now, finally, the last lab for today is the Markdown conversion to HTML. Let's go to right click on Markdown details. Let's go to page five again. Sorry. Page five. And let's go to, let's go in here and go to Markdown details. And then let's create a page menu item, page item, sorry. I on right click, click page item, and then input the details like uh, project details. Let's do this fast. So we have text area and um, form business project task. It's all the same steps actually, just a little bit of change. Form region is project task, and then column is. Um, I guess project details, where cap it should do. Scroll down a bit. We need one more uh, for the page item, just like how we did for the QR code. So let's go ahead, click this, right click, create page items, give it a name. Okay, and it's a very display only and escape special characters disabled. Display only. Okay, so this will be display only. And yeah, it should be escape special characters we disabled. So and the security. Turn off the escape special characters. Okay, right click generate QR code button and uh, create a duplicate. We just need one more. Create a duplicate and give it a name. Convert markdown and markdown label. What the name is this? And let's give the label as sorry. Mark down. And then uh, what we're gonna do is scroll down and then yeah, we need to create a process again. So right click, go to processes, processes, and create a process, give it a name and input the JavaScript code like we did in the previous one. Name is convert. Okay, and uh, JavaScript ML is picked up by default. So just copy and enter. And then when this should happen, this when, is when button pressed and which button pressed is if convert markdown button is pressed. And now let's uh, sorry, save these changes. Now what we're gonna do is run the project task report again. Okay, run this project task and uh, which one, let's choose the get RFP and then copy and paste this mark down. Get RFPs for new server and then go to markdown details, copy some project details and say click markdown. All right, so it displays the HTML for you. So after you input your markdown, it displays the HTML for you now. Okay, so that completes this particular lab as well. So what we have done in the last lab is utilizing external modules. We loaded some um, JavaScript modules into um, Apex and these uh, uh, modules are stored in a table. And then we, we need to call the table later on. We prepared a farm. We actually uh, created uh, a tabs 
container which has three different tabs. So that basically is the main tab which has the project ta task details. And then in the next two, we have um, code generation, QR code generation, as well as a markdown conversion. So we utilized, we created processes again. We created page items for QR code and markdown. We created a processes, which are going to call upon that particular um, modules that we have already loaded in and that generated QR code for us in one case. And then we also could see uh, how the markdown uh, is converted to HTML in the last lab. So that completes the entire workshop so far. Um, we have done um, different things. We In this workshop, we have learned um, how to utilize uh, server-side JavaScript in Apex. Um, we created an application uh, from a spreadsheet that we learned to uh, play around with the pseudocode. We utilized JavaScript code in um, SQL commands. Then we expanded the two processes and validations. We learned how to utilize that in uh, the page processes and validations in fact, and we tested different cases. And then uh, we um, utilized external modules wherein we tried to look, we looked into QR code generation and uh, email verification, and we also converted the markdown to HTML. So, and um, that actually completes the workshop today and a couple of useful links for the attendees. Everything about Apex, a one-stop shop for Apex is apex.oracle.com. Um, an Apex service announcement. This is um, an announcement that we did uh, when we actually launched Apex service. It's um, pretty much um, widely being used now. So please feel uh, feel free to uh, spread the message to your uh, colleagues and uh, utilize that in your uh, work area and you know uh, pass on a message to your colleagues and friends and let them sign up for the Oracle trial accounts and then you know um, try out Apex service and see how you can have. Um, like I mentioned, you get low code, the world's most popular low code application development platform on the world's best converged database, Oracle Autonomous Database, and everything on Exadata infrastructure. So how nice it is to quickly build and deploy applications uh, using a low code platform. And we have seen today in this case, how easy it is to, to spin up and to get hooked down to an Apex instance quickly. And all of you have already got the credits. So I encourage you to utilize your free credits to try out the other OCI services and also continue to use the free services um, uh, and build applications in Apex. We also have an Apex shortcuts uh, URL there. Apex community is the, please do get engaged yourself in the Apex community. And we also have blogs on blogs.oracle.com slash Apex. Uh, that completes the hands-on lab workshop today. Thank you so much for joining in and participating and performing the workshop on APEC service. Thank you so much. And you have a rest of the day. Good rest of the day. Thank you. Bye for now.